that with a single-minded purpose, and I agree with Mr. Kant, that we need to first get our own land fertile for competitiveness and extreme competitiveness. Even after you become very competitive, people are not going to dismantle their supply chains overseas or value chains overseas and switch because a small difference of 2 to 5 percent is not going to motivate people to dismantle those value chains and then come to India. So it's a Herculean task. We, what we did, we got carried away when we were running at 9%. We mm -hmm. got carried away and we opened up on the trade account significantly without reforming our economy for competitiveness. And what Mr. Kant can do is really, you know, ease of doing business more at the central level. But much of it is at the state level and not even at the state level, at the local self-government level. So this so, fiscal so federalism... Let me, let, me, let, sure. let, let me just finish this, yeah. because I'm a practitioner. Of course. You know, we're trying to build Indian brands, because, you know, one is make in India. You know, you can make a 200 rupees shirt in Ludhiana, but when it goes abroad and sells for 30,000 bucks because somebody's brand on it, because intellectual property you know, gets associated with that 200 bucks, it, it, it multiplies many times. So if you want India to be a, from a developing country to a developed nation, we need to build also intellectual property. So make in India is not only manufacture in India. You also create ideas in India, and you also create intellectual property in India, research and development. So it is a wrong, long road ahead. Now what we see, local self-government, we are wanting to build 20 factories all around India to so that they can service local markets more efficiently than international brands can. And it, is, it takes us two years to resolve the issue of a tree being cut because corruption has seeped down to such a level. And it is at the local self-government level. It is at a municip municipality level. So if we go by what our Prime Minister has said, na khayenge, na khane denge, right? Then you can wait until reform has to be done so seriously, and we've begun in, in the, on the land issue, you can, you can see that there are obstacles because there is competitiveness on, on, the, uh, on, on the political front. Right. What are we going to do about land acquisition, Mr. Khan? That's a huge issue, and uh, clearly it seems like the government is having a tough time breaking ice on that. Well, the 2013 bill was extremely complex. It was so complicated. Uh, it's just full of committees, subcommittees, uh, groups, subgroups. It'll take you uh, a decade to get a piece of land. Uh, India wants to do drainage, sewage, solid waste. India needs to accommodate 700 million people who are going to get into the process of urbanization. You need to create new cities. Otherwise, every single city will become a slum. India must use the eminent domain of the state to build its world-class infrastructure. Every single country of the world has done it. You can't create complications through land acquisition bills which are unworkable on ground. So are you, is there a thinking in the government that the government, since it's already fighting a stereotype that it's considered very pro-corporate, that it might just give up on the, on, on the contentious clauses? Or well, it might become a little more lenient on the contentious clauses of uh, uh, rehabilitation and the consensus clause? No, I think uh, the revised one which is presently on is a practical win-win situation. And I think we need to go through. For country's sake, you need to build up a political consensus on a number of issues. Issues of land, issues of labor. And I think we need to take the country forward more than anything else. And I think this present uh, modified bill which has come in is a pretty good bill. Mr. Kalyani, your thoughts on the land acquisition uh, bill? No, I totally agree with uh, uh, Amitabh. You know, I think somewhere we are beginning to lose what is paramount interest for the nation. You know, I, I was, uh, I attended the previous two sessions here, uh, the first uh, ambassador session, where the German ambassador talked about India being at the high table. Uh, in the next month in Hanover, and hoping that, uh, you know, from whatever he has heard, uh, a lot of things uh, are likely to happen out there. And uh, then uh, uh, Ms. Mehboba Mufti talking about uh, Prime Minister Modi has the mandate of this nation to make changes. 
Now, uh, clearly, if you have a mandate to make changes, people expect change to happen. And if you bring in bills like uh, land acquisition bills and things like that, which can take five to ten years to acquire a piece of land with 20 you know, agencies who can stop it from ever happening, I think uh, we, are, we are simply just not going to make progress. Right. Uh, Mr. Devishwan, do you want to make a point? Uh, uh, one has to think out of the box. Uh, for instance, uh, I mean, I'm in no position to do things, but if I were in the position to do some things, I would have said if the last bill had said four times the market price, I would go and say I would give you six times the market price to the farmers, but I will allow the land cost for new factories to be depreciated like plant and machinery instead of giving 25 percent over four years tax to be brought down from 30 to 25. I would link that reduction with land being now. You can say nowhere, nowhere in the world land depreciates, but, yeah. but you could always compensate uh, and link the reduction in corporate tax with the ex excessive cost of, of, of land. And the farmers would be with you if, if they are getting twice the amount of Do you think one price. of the big feelings has been the communication issue? You know, because this is not a bad deal for the farmers, but I think somewhere along the line the government has not been able to communicate the true essence of what is it that they're trying to do, whether it's Make in India, whether it's land acquisition, somewhere a lot of the essence of what they're trying to accomplish no. gets lost in translation. No. Uh, you know, um, on the land side, let me tell you, um, there's some very innovative things which are happening. In the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor, we went through a very uh, big process of town planning in Gujarat, which is extremely innovative. We've taken, uh, we're doing a city which is bigger than Singapore there. And uh, it's a unique, every farmer is on board. In Maharashtra, we've taken about, close to Aurangabad, we've taken 60 square kilometers of land, where Maharashtra state is just on plain negotiations with the farmer. So there are very unique things happening. But I think if the country needs to grow at 9 to 10 percent, if manufacturing needs to grow at 14 to 15 percent, you need to make things easy. You don't need to make things complicated and difficult. And that's what's important. And politicians across the board must realize this, that the paramount importance is the country to grow and create jobs. Absolutely. Let's, um, let's, uh, let's go back. Let's go back in the last decade. We've seen companies like Flipkart, Snapdeal, whatever innovation we've seen, we've seen it in the technology space. And they're really not new ideas, but of course, they've been implemented and executed very well in India. So Valerie, I'd like you to come in here. Uh, is it easier, or, or as an entrepreneur, how do you, how do you look at you know, uh, a brick and mortar business versus a technology driven business? What, are, what's, what works for a tech business? Wh why is it so cool to be a technology entrepreneur and not a brick and mortar entrepreneur? Part of uh, what's working so what's, for India. What, one, thing, one thing that's interesting about India as a market and other markets like this is that any, any technology, any e-commerce, for example, you mentioned Flipkart and Snapdeal, it's impossible to build that business purely as an internet only company. You have to think about logistics. You have to think about last mile delivery. You have to think about warehousing. You have to think about all these things. And even as ZipDial as, and, you know, and now Twitter as a, as a mobile and, and kind of content driven business, um, it, it's, we, we think all the time about, about the fact that people are offline and how are they interacting with other types of content offline, be it television, print, et cetera. So there's this constant offline, online bridge. Uh, when it comes to, and hopefully the, 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 this boom and things like e-commerce and whatnot will actually um, have an ancillary impact on other brick and mortar businesses. So as e-commerce grows, there's a lot more demand for logistics and innovation in logistics and, and betting big on those types of businesses. Or, uh, so I, I think that there's a, a spillover effect or, or a very, very direct linkage between success of kind of pure technology internet and, and even more opportunities for innovation and growth within brick and mortar. Okay. 
I was speaking to a businessman from Ludhiana and he likes to count potholes. So he told me that there are uh, about uh, 163 potholes, 168 between Delhi and Ludhiana and 62 between a four kilometer stretch of his two factories. So, so that's that's the challenge that we are looking at. And then he even related, you know, he narrated an anecdote to me that he interviewed this uh, uh, young gentleman who had an engineering degree. And he asked him, what's the difference between an inch and a centimeter? And he said, N they're not related. And this is somebody who had an engineering degree. So, so we are talking about a huge skilling challenge. We are talking about a huge infrastructure challenge here. Uh, Mr. Khan, we are talking about cooperative federalism, where states are coming forward and taking equal responsibility. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that you, know, you, you set these deadlines for states, and states have to deliver. How are you going to monitor, and how are you going to make sure that the states buy in into your vision? Because a lot is dependent on, to make, make an India success, a lot depends on how states work with, work with the center or work with the businesses that are going to come in and set up businesses there and invest. Uh, so, you know, much of the action is in states, and I think uh, you need to build up a very strong competitive spirit.